Dear students, today in Kingdom Animalia Part 1, we are going to talk about the introduction to Kingdom Animalia, basis of classification, levels of organization, patterns of symmetry, coelom, segmentation and notochord, and classification of Kingdom Animalia. Introduction Kingdom Animalia comprises millions of animal species and studying them without a basic classification may lead to confusion. In addition to this, there are several new species of animals being constantly discovered. Classification is very essential for identification, naming and assigning a systematic position to the newly discovered species. Animal kingdom is classified mainly based on the closely resembling characteristic features. Kingdom Animalia is characterized of eukaryotic, multicellular, heterotrophic organisms. They include 35 phyla of which 11 are considered as major phyla. Almost 99% of animals are invertebrates or animals without the backbone. The remaining represents vertebrates or animals with the backbone on the basis of the presence or absence of notochord otherwise called the vertebral column. Animals are also categorized into two major categories. They are non-chordates and chordates. Now the basis of classification. Multicellular organisms are structurally and functionally different, but yet they possess certain common fundamental features such as arrangement of cell layers, the levels of organization, nature of coelom, the presence or absence of segmentation, notochord and the organization of the organ system. Levels of organization. All members of kingdom animalia are metazoans that means they are multicellular animals and exhibit different patterns of cellular organization. The cells of the metazoans are not capable of independent existence and exhibit division of labor. Among the metazoan cells may be functionally isolated or similar kinds of cells may be grouped together to form tissues, organs and organ systems. Cellular level of organization. This basic level of organization is seen in sponges. The cells in the sponges are arranged as loose aggregates and do not form tissues. That is they exhibit cellular level of organization. There is division of labor among the cells and different types of cells are functionally isolated. In sponges, the outer layer is formed of pinocytes or plate-like cells that maintain the size and structure of the sponge and the inner layer which is formed of quinocytes. These are flagellated collar cells that create and maintain water flow through the sponge thus facilitating respiratory and digestive functions. Animals such as sponges lack nervous tissue and muscle tissue. What does this tell you about sponges? Absence of nervous and muscular tissue indicates that sponges must have been one of the earliest forms in the course of evolution. Absence of tissues indicate that the body organization would have been at cellular level only without cells forming compact tissues. Sponges belong to phylum porifera. They are multicellular organisms. They belong to the most primitive phylum. They do not have digestive, excretory, muscular or nervous systems. Their cells are without the cell walls. The sponge's body is hollow. Generally, it has an irregular body organization. All other animals having a definite shape and function systems are evolved from the simplest sponges. As they lack any nervous or muscle system, the water goes in from the surrounding, exchange of materials occurs and the water comes out. The sponges completely depend on the water flow for their nutrition, oxygen, waste cleaning processes etc. All their life processes are derived from the water circulation only. Here in this image you can see the sponges which have the ostium through which the water enters into the spongocele, a outermost layer called the epidermal cells formed by the pinocytes. They have a spongocele through which the water flows, the porocytes of the pore cells, the ostium through which the water flows into the quinocytes which is the inner layer of the sponges, the osculum through which the water exits out and the amoebocytes. Now tissue level of organization. In some animals 
cells that perform similar functions are aggregated to form tissues. The cells of a tissue integrate in a highly coordinated fashion to perform a common function due to the presence of nerve cells and sensory cells. This tissue level of organization is exhibited in diploblastic animals like the cnidarians. The formation of tissues is the first step towards evolution of the body plan in animals, example hydra which belongs to cylindrata. In the right side image of cnidaria or hydra you can see the tentacles, the mouth leading into the gastrovascular cavity, the nerve net the epidermis, the mesoglia between the epidermis and the endodermis and the gastrodermis. Organ level of organization. Different kinds of tissues aggregate to form an organ to perform a specific function. Organ level of organization is a further advancement over the tissue level of organization appears for the first time in the phylum platyhelminthes and is seen in other higher phyla. In the image on the right side, you can see the flatworm which has a mouth the pharynx, the intestine, ventrolateral nerve cords, sensory lobes, the eyes and the brain. The most efficient and the highest level of organization among the animals is exhibited by the flat worms, nematodes, annelids, arthropods, mollusks, echinoderms and chordates. The evolution of mesoderm in these animals has led to their structural complexity. The tissues are organized to form organs and organ systems. Each system is associated with a specific function and show organ system level of organization. Highly specialized nerve and sensory cells coordinate and integrate the functions of the organ systems which can be very primitive and simple or complex depending on the individual animal. For example, the digestive system of platyhelminthes has only a single opening to the exterior which serves as both mouth and anus and hence called an incomplete digestive system. In the image of the flat on the right side you can see the mouth and the anus together through which the food enters and the waste is excreted enters into the pharynx. Hence the digestive system is incomplete. From Ascalminthus to Chordates, all animals have a complete digestive system with two openings, mouth and anus. Here you can see the primitive chordate which has a mouth, the pharynx surrounded by the pharyngeal slits for respiration, it reaches the intestine and opens out through the anus. It has a brain, dorsal hollow nerve cord, notochord. You can see the muzzle segments and the post anal tail. Similarly, the circulatory system is of two types, the open type and the closed type. Open type in which the blood remains filled in the tissue spaces due to the absence of blood capillaries. Arthropods, mollusks, echinoderms and urochordates are examples of open type. In the closed type in which the blood is circulated through blood vessels of varying diameters of arteries, veins and capillaries as in annelids cephalochordates and vertebrates. Here you can see the differences between the open circulatory system and the closed circulatory system wherein the open circulatory system is common to mollusks and arthropods. Open circulatory system pump blood into a nemocele with the blood diffusing back to the circulation system between the cells. In the closed circulatory system, blood is pumped by a heart through the vessels and does not normally fill the body cavities. Diploblastic and triploblastic organization. During embryonic development, the tissues and organs of animals originate from two or three embryonic germ layers. On the basis of the origin and development, animals are classified into two categories diploblastic animals and triploblastic animals. Animals in which the cells are arranged in two embryonic layers, the external ectoderm and the internal endoderm are called diploblastic animals. In these animals, the ectoderm gives rise to the epidermis, the outer layer of the body wall and the endoderm gives rise to the gastrodermis, tissue lining the gut cavity. An unidentified layer present between the ectoderm and the endoderm is called the mesoglia. This type of diploblastic animals example are corals, jellyfish, sea anemone. Animals in which the developing embryo has three germinal layers are called triploblastic animals and consist of the outer ectoderm, 
which forms the skin, hair, neurons, nail, teeth, etc. The inner endoderm, which forms the gut, lung, liver, and the middle layer called the mesoderm, forms the muscle, bone, heart, etc. Most of the triploblastic animals show organ system level of organization. Example, flatworms to chordates. Here you can see the differences between a diploblastic animal and a triploblastic animal in the cut section. In the diploblastic animal, we see the ectoderm, the endoderm surrounding the gastric cavity. In between the ectoderm and the endoderm is the mesoglia. The right side, the triploblastic animals have outermost layer called the ectoderm, innermost layer surrounding the gastric cavity called the endoderm. Between the ectoderm and the endoderm is a layer of cells called the mesoderm. Now patterns of symmetry. Symmetry is the body arrangement in which the parts that lie on opposite side of an axis are identical. An animal's body plan results from the animal's pattern of development. The simplest body plan is seen in sponges. They do not display symmetry and are asymmetrical. Such animals lack a definite body plan or are irregular shaped and any plane passing through the center of the body does not divide them into two equal halves example sponges here in this image you can see the asymmetry in sponges left side spongilla in the middle is the voxia which has become extinct now and leucosolenia an asymmetrical body plan is also seen in adult gastropods example snails symmetrical animals have paired body parts that are arranged on either side of a plane passing through the central axis. When any plane passing through the central axis of the body divides an organism into two equal parts, it's called radial symmetry. Such radially symmetrical animals have a top and bottom side, but no dorsal, back and ventral side, abdomen, no right and left side. They have a body plan in which the body parts are organized in a circle around an axis. It is the principal symmetry in diploblastic animals. Nidarians such as sea anemone and corals are radially symmetrical. However, diploblastic animals like echinoderms, example starfish, have five planes of symmetry and show pentamerous radial symmetry. In the image on the right side, you can see the radial symmetry seen in sea animal and the pentamerous symmetry seen in the starfish. Animals which possess two pairs of symmetrical sides are said to be biradially symmetrical. Biradial symmetry is a combination of radial and bilateral symmetry as seen in tenophores. There are only two planes of symmetry, one through the longitudinal axis the other one through the sagittal axis and the other through the longitudinal and transverse axis. Example, comb jellyfish, otherwise called pleurobrachia. In the image on the right side, you can see the longitudinal and the sagittal axis seen in comb jellyfish. Animals which have two similar halves on either side of the central plane show bilateral symmetry. It is an advantageous type of symmetry in triploblastic animals, which helps in seeking food, locating mates, especially from predators more efficiently. Animals that have dorsal and ventral sides, anterior and posterior ends, right and left sides are bilaterally symmetrical and exhibit cephalization, in which the sensory and the brain structures are concentrated at the anterior end of the animal. Here you can see the bilateral symmetry in insects. Coelom. The presence of body cavity or coelom is important in classifying animals. Most animals possess a body cavity between the body wall and the alimentary canal and is lined by the mesoderm. Animals which do not possess a body cavity are called acelomates. Since there is no body cavity in these animals, their body is solid without a perivisceral cavity. This restricts the free movement of the internal organs, example flatworms. On the right side, you can see the flatworm, which is an acelomate. The cut section shows the ectoderm, the gastric cavity lined endoderm. And in between the ectoderm and the endoderm, there is no coelom. There is only mesoglia or mesenchyme. In some animals, the body cavity is not fully lined by the mesodermal epithelium. But the mesoderm is formed as scattered pouches. 
between the ectoderm and the endoderm. Such a body cavity is called pseudoceal and is filled with pseudocelomic fluid. Animals that possess a pseudoceal are called pseudocelomates. Example, roundworms. The pseudocelomic fluid in the pseudocelom acts as a hydrostatic skeleton and allows free movement of the visceral organs and for circulation of nutrients. In the image below you can see the round worm which is a pseudocelomate animal. In the right side you can see the section, the outermost body covering called the ectoderm and the innermost layer which surrounds the gastric cavity called the endoderm. In between the ectoderm and the endoderm the muscle layer is formed which are in pockets called the mesoderm. Hence there is no proper coelom in this u-coelom. U-coelom or true coelom is a fluid filled cavity that develops within the mesoderm and is lined by the mesodermal epithelium called peritoneum. Such animals with a true body cavity are called coelomates or u-coelomates. Below image you can see on the left side a coelomate animal example the flatworms which has the ectoderm, the endoderm, in between the ectoderm and the endoderm is the mesoderm and there is no coelom in this. In the middle you can see the pseudo coelomate animals which are example roundworms which has an ectoderm, the endoderm, in between the ectoderm and the endoderm is the mesoderm which forms pockets and there is a pseudo coelom. On the right side you can see the coelomates example the mollusks, annelids, arthropods, echinoderms and cordates. They have the ectoderm, the endoderm and the mesoderm which is split up by the mesentery and forms the peritoneum. Based on the mode of formation of coelom, the eucelomates are classified into two types, schizocelomates and enterocelomates. Schizocelomates in these animals, the body cavity is formed by splitting of the mesoderm, example annelids, arthropods and the mollusks. In the enterocelomate animals, the body cavity is formed from the mesodermal pouches of the acanteron, example echinoderms, hemichordates and chordates. In this image, you can see the development of the schizocelum in the above, where there is invagination of the ectoderm forming the endoderm, lining the gastric cavity and the mesoderm between the ectoderm and the endoderm forms pockets around the gastric cavity and this forms the coelom. Below you can see the development of the enterocelom where there is invagination of the ectoderm forming the gastric cavity resulting in the endoderm layer and around the endoderm there are pockets of acanteron or pouches from the gut which separates the, from the gut and forms the developing coelom. Now what are the differences between the schizocelom and enterocelom. In schizocelom, the condition of the embryonic development in which the body cavity is formed by the splitting of the mesoderm. In the enterocelom, the condition in which the coelom forms from the pouches pinched off from the digestive tract. In schizocelom, coelom begins as splits within the solid mesodermal mass. In enterocelom, mesoderm arises as lateral outpouchings of acanteron with hollows that become coelomic cavity. In schizocelom, cleavage occurs, holoblastic, spiral and determinate. The cleavage in enterocelom is radial and indeterminate. Normally schizocelom occurs in protostomes, whereas enterocelom occurs in deuterostomes. In schizocelom examples, annelids, arthropods and mollusks. Enterocelom examples, echinoderms, hemichordates and chordates. What is the advantage of true coelom over a pseudo coelom? The advantage of coelom over the pseudo coelom is that true coelom makes the digestive tract and the digestive system complex. Pseudo coelom is derived from the blastocoel, a cavity filled with fluid around the organs, provide an hydrostatic skeleton to aid movement and allow for more efficient circulation of nutrients and removal of waste. What are the differences between the acelomate and pseudo coelomate animals? Acelomate animals, the animals possess no coelom and they are called acelomates. Whereas in pseudocelomates, in some animals, the body cavity isn't lined by mesoderm. Instead, mesoderm is present in scattered pouches in between the ectoderm and endoderm. 
such cavity is called pseudocelom and such animals are called pseudocelomates example of acelomate platyhelminthes example of pseudocelomate ascelminthes now what are the differences between the acelomates and celomates acelomates all three germinal layers are not present or not separated whereas in celomate is located between the digestive tract and the body wall acelomates no cavity is found between the body wall and the digestive tract in celomates celom is lined by mesoderm cells example of acelomate protozoa to platyhelminthes celomates annelids to chordates now what are the differences between celomate versus pseudocelomate a celomate is an organism with a body cavity between the body wall and the digestive tract a pseudocelomate is an invertebrate with a fluid filled body cavity between the endoderm and the mesoderm a celomate is called eucelomate whereas in the pseudocelomates they are called blastocelomates or hemocelomates celomates possess a body cavity called celom whereas in pseudocelomates possess a body cavity called pseudocelom celomates the body cavity is inside the mesoderm in pseudocelomates body cavity is between the endoderm and the mesoderm celomates body cavity is lined with peritoneum in pseudocelomates the body cavity is partially lined with peritoneum in celomates celom is derived by splitting of the mesoderm pseudocelomates is derived from the blastocele of the embryo celomates in the celom the nutrients circulate through the blood stream in pseudocelom the nutrients diffuse through diffusion and osmosis celomates organs are well organized inside the celom whereas pseudocelomates organs are less organized inside the pseudocelom in celomates can be either vertebrates or invertebrates whereas pseudocelomates are always invertebrates examples annelids arthropods mollusks echinoderms hemichordates and chordates example of celomates whereas the example of pseudocelomates nematodes entoprocta rotifera acinthocephala and gastrotrichia segmentation and notochord in some animals the body is externally and internally divided into a series of repeated units called segments with a serial repetition of some organs this is called metamerism the simplest form of segmentation is found in annelids in which each unit of the body is very similar to the next one but in arthropods or cockroaches the segments may look different and has different functions here you can see above the segments formed by the septa example earthworm below you can see the male and the female cockroach which are divided into segments which perform different function animals which possess notochord at any stage of the development are called chordates notochord is a mesodermally derived rod like structure formed on the dorsal side during embryonic development in some animals based on the presence or absence of notochord animals are classified as chordates and these chordates are cephalochordates urochordates vertebrata like the pieces on the mammalia and the non chordates like the porifera which belongs to hemichordata classification of kingdom animalia animal kingdom is divided into two subdivisions parazoa and eumetazoa based on the organization parazoa are multicellular organisms like the sponges and the cells are loosely aggregated and do not form the tissues or organs eumetazoa these include the multicellular animals with well defined tissues which are organized as organs and organ systems eumetazoans includes two taxonomic levels called grades they include radiata and bilateria grade 1 radiata among the eumetazoa a few animals have an organization of two layers of cells the outer ectoderm and the inner endoderm separated by a jelly like substance called the mesoglea they are radially symmetrical and are diploblastic example cnidarians sea anemone jellyfish and tinophores called comb jellies on the right side you can see the comb jelly bilateria the eumetazoans other than radiata show organ level of organization and are bilaterally symmetrical and triploblastic the grade bilateria includes two taxonomic levels called divisions division 1 protostomia and division 2 deuterostomia you can see some animals showing bilateral symmetry like the sea turtle butterfly drosophila shark lobsters 
and human beings. The differences between radiator and bilateria, you can see radiator has only diploblastic animals which has the ectoderm, the endoderm lining the digestive cavity. Whereas bilateria has ectoderm, endoderm and mesoderm which are all triploblastic animals. What are the differences between the radial symmetry animals and bilateral symmetry animals? The radial symmetry animal generates identical body halves around the central axis. Bilateral symmetry generates only two sides as left and right along the sagittal plane. The radial symmetry body cannot be divided into left and right side. Whereas in the bilateral symmetry animals, the sagittal plane divides the body into left and right sides. In the radial symmetry, similar body parts are arranged in a regular manner around the central axis. Whereas in the bilateral symmetry, similar body parts are arranged in both left and the right side equally. In radial symmetry, the development of the head in front of the body is rare. Whereas in bilateral symmetry, the development of the head in front of the organism's body is a prominent feature. Example of radial symmetry animals, sea urchin, sea anemone, jellyfish, starfish are examples. Examples of bilateral symmetry animals, human, insects, crustaceans, orchid flowers are examples. Now division 1, protostomia. Proto means first, stomia means mouth. Protostomia includes the eumetazoans in which the embryonic blastopore develops into mouth. This division includes three subdivisions namely acelomata, pseudocelomata and schizocelomata. You can see the examples on the right side, foronids, cytognita, spiralia, the nematodes and the arthropods. Division 2, deuterostomia. Deuteron means secondary, stomia means mouth, eumetazoans in which the anus is formed from or near the blastopore and the mouth is formed away from the blastopore. It includes only one subdivision, enterocelomata. They have a coelom called enterocele formed from the acanteron. You can see on the right side the examples, cephalochordata, urochordata and vertebrates which belong to the phylum chordata and hemichordates like the ambulacraria and the echinoderms. Here you can see the classification of kingdom animalia based on the common fundamental features. Kingdom animalia are all multicellular organisms. Based on the levels of organization, they have cellular level organization, example the phylum porifera. Based on the levels of organization of the tissues, organs and organ systems, organisms that have radial symmetry, example phylum cylindrata, otherwise nidaria and phylum tenophora. Based on the bilateral symmetry, they have acelomates without body cavity, example platyhelminthes with false coelom otherwise called the pseudocelomates, example phylum ascalminthes and with true coelom or coelomates, example the annelida, arthropoda, mollusca, echinodermata, hemichordata and chordata. So today in Kingdom Animalia part 1, we discussed about the introduction to Kingdom Animalia, basis of classification, levels of organization, patterns of symmetry, based on coelom, segmentation and notochord and classification of kingdom animalia. So thank you, kindly subscribe, like, share and comment to channel Read Medprep Academy. Kindly register for UG and PG NEET type MCQs in our website www.readmedprepacademy.com Our Facebook ID is Read Med Prep Academy. Our email is readmedprepacademy at gmail.com Our Instagram is Read Med Prep Academy. To join Read Med Prep Academy, WhatsApp the number given below. Kindly post your questions in the comment box. We will reply with appropriate answers regarding the lecture. Thank you very much.